Welcome back in, everybody, and very excited to talk to our next guest, one of the best boxers on the planet, one of the most entertaining fighters on the planet. It's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to David Benavides, who's fresh off his win over Demetrius Andrade. Hell of a performance, man. Uh, I got to imagine that went, I, I mean, imagine as uh, according to game plan, David, I'm watching this fight and I'm seeing you just take like these, these quick shots early on. Uh, you had to be so savvy because he was looking so pretty in those early rounds, but you waited your time and you executed, man. So what's going through your mind in those early rounds? Do you feel that entire time? Like you're setting them up, learning them? Like how, how did you go about that before you executed finishing that thing off? Yeah, so, you know, when these fights come together, I mean, I always tell people that you don't always have to start fast. It's a 12-round fight. And a lot of times you see guys start fast, you know, exactly with Demetrius Andre. They start fast, and then they end up folding through the middle, middle of the rounds. So, I mean, I was just in there. I was trying to download data, trying to catch his speed, trying to see, feel his power and all that. Um, he threw a, a few combinations. You know, I caught all of them. And then as soon as I figured out that, he doesn't really have too much power. He doesn't have nothing for me, nothing uh, to offer for me. So there's nothing for me to be too cautious of. And that's when I really started to go to work, you know, start implementing the jab, implementing the body shots. I had caught him with the left hook in like the first round and I know I'd hurt him. It wasn't really a hard punch, but I think it was right on the button. And I, I knew, OK, so we're going to start breaking them down, breaking them down. I had through an overhand right, I think in the third round and it kind, kind of caught him in the chest. So I knew that once, if I threw it again, he was going to try to block it. So I had to go through the middle. So I threw that, it hit in, in the middle, boom. And that changed the whole trajectory of the fight. And um, I think after that, after that fourth round, uh, it was just, I was just too much for him. Um, and then just me being who I am and just having, you know, an, ex an, an extreme gas tank and just keep, you know, overflowing and pressuring him with shots and shots and shots. I think that just ultimately it led him to fold. And, you know, I was just too much for him. How underrated do you think uh, your savvy in the ring is? Because people always hear the monster. They know you're going to come kill him. That's what everybody's looking for. But but how underrated do you think that your your IQ is? I think now it's it, it's with these fights, it's shed a little bit more light on how, you know, how really good I am. And that's not the thing about me is I know how to do everything. I know how to do everything and I, and I know how to adjust to everything, too. So that makes me even more dangerous and um, people are still going to doubt me. People are still going to say, I'm not this, I'm not that. And you know, like I, everybody said that I have no footwork. I have no defenses and that, you know, I showed a completely different fighter. So that's what I want. I want people to keep doubting me. So at the end of the day, I can keep shutting their mouths up. I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, you, you, your lofty goals are still there, obviously, but have you allowed yourself to have a, you know, some pride, you know, you went through some adversity that you've talked about early in the career. A lot of people kicking dirt on your name. So how good does it feel to be at this point where it's like, oh, you know, the, the big money fights are right on the doorstep, championships and all that stuff is, is really, really close. That ha there has to be a, a, a real level of pride for you there. Yeah, it feels really good, especially uh, the thing that I try to think about always is like I always try to put myself in my shoes and the promise I made to myself when I was like 10 years old. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be the best ever, this and that. And you just let that guide you throughout your career. You never – you never – you try to not to lose sight on who you are and what type of dreams you really wanted. And now that we're right here um, at the doorstep of everything that I manifested for myself, it's really unfolding in front of me. And I'm just, I'm just really excited. You know, now, now it's time to work even harder and, and that's exactly what we're doing. And now we're just reaching for the stars. How, um, how are you taking in all the stuff with the big fights? You say you call out Canelo after the fight. I see reports yesterday that you're not one of these three finalists that are out there. I don't know what's true or untrue, but for your standpoint, we know you want to fight him. So, like, how do you handle the noise of all of it when you see ESPN reports it might be Charlo Munguia or Crawford and David Benavides is not among the candidates? Do, does that bother you? Do you care? Do you start already thinking about the next plan? Or do you like, – how do you how do you handle all this in a social media world as, as a, a guy who wants that fight? I mean, it really does bother me, but I, don't, I try not to even be on social media like that too much, to be honest with you. I just try to do my thing. Um, I'm about to have my um, – my daughter's about to be born in a couple of days. So, I mean, I'm just very happy about that. So, I mean, like I said, if they want to give me the opportunity, it's fine. If they don't, it's fine as well. Um, if we don't get that Canelo fight made, then we might look to make a fight happen with Charlo or whoever the, whatever big fight's right there. I feel like – it, it, with me, it's not, it never ended with Canelo. You know, there's still always going to be more uh, opponents and all this. And 
you know, so we'll, we'll find the next best thing. You know, it really doesn't matter to me. Like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay put. I'm going to stay working hard. And, you know, like I said, David Benavides is not going nowhere. Would you, uh, did, is any part of you thinking to the reaction of that? Like when you don't see yourself among a finalist or a list that you looked too good in the last fight for him to want to be in the ring with you? I mean, I don't know what it is, man. It's just like, uh, it's funny because Mauricio to Suleiman said that we're going to start negotiating with them, this and that. And then I see that the three top that the, the three top options. I'm like, oh, it's, it's a little funny, but I mean, they they don't want to fight me for a reason. If I was such an easy opponent, they would have been took me out already. And at the end of the day, if they take me out, they get the respect, they get the titles, they get everything. You know what I mean? So for them not giving me the opportunity now is for a reason, and that gives me even more confidence in myself and in my skills. What uh is this gonna be your first daughter? What is uh what are, are you? Are yeah, you... my first daughter. Right. Yeah, are, are you ready for girl dad and... life? Yeah, no, I'm very ready for it. That's awesome, man. Like, what is yeah, that? It's funny. It's funny. It's funny because I tell my wife, I'm like, all the attitude and all the hard times giving me, my daughter's going to give that to you. <laughs> it's different, man. Listen, I got one of yeah. each. Uh, that's it's you're you're a dad in different ways, but that's uh, that's unbelievably cool for you, man. What is uh, what are the uh, the holidays going to be like? Because I'm sure this is like I know your son's got to be at that age where Christmas has got to be a big deal for him. Yeah, no, yeah, we're very excited. Um, especially December is a big month for us. Especially now that our daughter's gonna be born on December twelfth, we got that, and then my birthday December seventeenth, and then um, we got Christmas. So it's, it's a big month for us, man. As a family, I think this is probably one of the most exciting months we've had, with me and my wife and our kids. So and we're definitely gonna make it special. Before I get you out of here, David, uh, fight this weekend, Devin Haney, Regis Progre. Who do you uh, who do you like in that fight, and why? It's going to be a great fight, man. I feel like Devin Haney is probably the best boxer out of, of that of the whole weight class. But the thing that makes this fight so dangerous is that Regis Progre, he is a dog. And he's willing to put himself in those really uncomfortable situations. If nothing's going good for him, that he's going to try to pull a knockout out. So that makes it very special on its own. I mean, I know Regis Progre, he's like a, he has the same type of fighting spirit as me. So he's not if, – if, if he's not going to make it easy for Devin Haney, but – Ultimately, to be honest with you, I feel like Devin Haney just has too much experience. He has too much weapons. He's been in there with the best of the best. You can say anything you want about Devin Haney, but he's been doing what he's supposed to do, find the best of the best, and I think that experience is going to carry him uh, for this fight. Hey, it's always a thrill to talk to you, David. Uh, congrats on the great performance. Congrats on the upcoming birth of your daughter, and uh, happy early birthday, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Take care.